In this video, I'm going to be putting the Matterport Pro 2 camera and the Insta360 X5 head to head, as I'm going to be making virtual tours with them both using the Matterport ecosystem. By that, I mean I'm going to be using the Matterport app to scan a virtual tour and make a digital twin. The reason for doing this is because the X5 and also the X4 recently got made compatible with the Matterport ecosystem. It took a while coming, but finally they are. And obviously they're pretty new cameras. Uh, the X5 came out earlier this year in 2025, while the Pro 2 actually came out way back in 2017, which in technology terms is pretty ancient. I mean, it's what, eight years old now. So I'm gonna see if these little cameras are catching up at all with the Pro 2. I know the Pro 3 is out, but I only have the Pro 2, so that's why we're just doing a test against this. So we're gonna see if you do need to fork out on one of these, or these little cameras, which are quite a bit cheaper, can do the job. So first of all, let's run through a few of the specs of both cameras so we know what we're comparing. So first up, the obvious thing is the size and weight of these two cameras. Obviously, the Matterport Pro 2 is a pretty hefty piece of kit, to be honest. It's very big, very bulky. You have to have an extra bag to carry it around. And it does look like a speed camera, unfortunately. Whereas the X5 here is teeny tiny, very portable, very lightweight. And you can just put it in your camera bag with all your other gear. And because it's so lightweight, you can actually put it on a monopod, which makes it far easier to carry around the property, whereas you do need a tripod with one of these, where it can become a little bit annoying when you're doing stairs because you have to change the angle of the legs on this, whereas this, you can just use it as it is, absolutely fine. So they're the obvious differences. This is a lot more portable than this. Then we come on to the, well, what's inside. So let's have a little look at the sensors. Inside the X5 and the X4, you've got a 72 megapixel sensor. And when you're using the Matterport app, it does make use of the 72 megapixels. It used to be the case, I think, with the X3. And when the X4 was sort of partly compatible, it only, well, it only worked using the 18 megapixels. Whereas in here, we have 134 megapixels. So going by that, you're going to think this is going to be a lot sharper, but let's take a look in a little moment. And then the other things we need to know are the price. Obviously, this retails for here in the UK, it's £409. So it's about $550, I think. That's brand new. Whereas the Pro 2, I don't think you can actually buy it new now because Matterport, like, well, like I say, this came out in 2017 and now they have their Pro 3 camera. I mean, the Pro 3 is, God, it's like $5,000 or $4,000. I'll put on the screen now to get that right. Whereas this, you can actually pick these up secondhand if you shop around eBay here in the UK for less than a thousand pounds. I actually got a crazy deal on this one. There was a guy who did a big construction job he bought about 20 of these for some reason and then finished the job and just sold them off like super cheap on eBay. I got this for £600, so real good deal. So it's actually only a little bit more expensive than this when you get this second hand. So that is worth keeping in mind when we look at the results and you're sort of weighing up the price and what you, well, what you want to achieve with these cameras. The other thing with these two cameras, which you should point out as well, is that obviously the Massport Pro 2 and Pro 3, you can only use them with the Massport ecosystem. So when you are forking out that money, you are, well, you're stuck to using it with Massport. Whereas these little cameras and any other 360 camera, you can use it just to shoot 360 shots. So you can make your own virtual tours using something like Cooler. You're not just stuck in the Matterport ecosystem. So that is something worth keeping in mind if you are thinking you might not just use Matterport. Another thing to keep in mind with these two cameras is how they shoot because the Pro 2 and the Pro 3 cameras, they shoot in a way where they rotate on an axis and then they stitch the images together. Whereas the X5 and well other 360 cameras take just one shot because they've got 280 degree lenses, which then stitch together. So in theory, these should shoot a lot quicker than the Pro 2 and Pro 3. But we'll talk about that a bit more when I show you the examples on screen. Because I've well I've been around here already and I've shot some examples in the daylight so we could see what's going on outside as well. 
And when we look at these examples, we are going to be looking at well, how good the images are, like how detailed they are, how sharp they are, how they both handle the colors and the dynamic range. And we're going to be looking at those windows as well to see if there's any sort of weird purple fringing going on, which you can sometimes get with three, 360 HDR images. So join me now on the computer and we will take a look at those examples. So both those tools have now uploaded to my Matterport dashboard. So let's take a look at the Pro 2 one first and see how it then compares with the X5. So let's start a screen record now and take a look at this Pro 2 tour. So I'll make it full screen. One thing to keep in mind when we're looking at these is only the bit in the center of the image, which is gonna have that full 134 megapixel. Um, and in the X5, it's gonna be 72 megapixel. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking around the edges, it well, looks a little bit pixelated. That's because it's only the middle that's really picking up that 434 megapixels of the sensor. And as you can see here, it, it does look nicely in detail. I mean, we can zoom in and you can sort of see the needles of the tree and even make out some of the writing up there. And if we spin round, we can see that the outside is nicely exposed too. You can see everything outside in good detail. And also it seems to have handled the colors really well too, because here we're actually kind of, there were white lights. And then here you've got yellow lights and then outside is always like that sort of blue light that you get from the outside. Um, but it seems to have handled that really well. It's not, there's no areas which are sort of really orange or really yellow. It does seem to have balanced it all out really nicely. And this is quite a long room as well. And again, it's, you can see what's going on outside. So let's take a little move to the forward here, to the front rather, and let's zoom in around here and have a look at that tree. And like I say, you can really see the detail there in the tree, in the needles, and you can easily read what is going on on this picture up there. And also you can see all the way through here to the other room, because again, all these sort of levels of lighting are all a bit different. So let's have a little click through there now and see how it looks in there. Again, all nicely exposed and looking really crisp detail. <clears throat> and you can see everything outside. And if we just skim through to the back room here, again, all nicely exposed outside. And if we actually go into the windows, can see there's not really any fringing going on either. It does look very good. And again, the colors look really good in here. And if we zoom in here, you can see that you can actually see like the signature on this picture here. So in all, the Pro 2 has done a really good job, I think, really good detail, really good colors, and it handles that dynamic range very, very well indeed. So let's take a look at the X5 now. So this is now the X5 tour and you can already see that the detail definitely is not as good. I mean, if we zoom in here, you can't really see any of the needles on the tree at all, and you definitely cannot make out the wording in that picture back there. And also, yeah, just it all just looks a little bit washed out, to be honest. I mean, the detail is not bad, uh, it, like if you zoom out and sort of look at it as a whole, but yeah, if you do zoom in, then you really do start to notice that there is a real deterioration in the detail. And yeah, looking around here as well, like you can see what's going on outside. Um, so in terms of the sort of dynamic range, it, it has got it, but yeah, how it's handled these lights here and down here, just yeah, nowhere near as good as the Pro 2. And also around the windows as well, it's got a bit of sort of bleeding light little bit of fringing going on, which you just didn't get with the Pro 2. But I mean, you can still make out everything out. I mean, it's passable, it's fine. You could use this for sort of real estate virtual tour, I guess. But yeah, compared to the Pro 2, yeah, you're just not getting that detail and just that quality really that you are with the Pro 2. And again, here, if we zoom in, you, yeah, you just can't see the individual needles as much. And again, you can't, read what's going on on this picture. You can make out all the words, all the writing in the Pro 2. Um, I mean, you can see through here, but again, it's not as detailed and some areas are really blown out. So yeah, it doesn't really have the same handling of the dynamic range as the Pro 2. And here, everything actually, everything's really sort of washed out. And that's one of the sort of shames about the using Matterport is you can't really do any editing to it. I mean, if this was, 
maybe through cooler and you'd just taken these shots using the camera and then edited them yourself, you could probably salvage this and make it look a bit better. So let's just have a quick go through here though. See how we're getting on here. Again, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can see everything, but it's, yeah, it's not quite as crisp and sharp. And the Pro 2, you could see everything out here, but here it does just look really blue, like the colors, like with the Pro 2, all the colors seem to be correct. Whereas here, yeah, the outside is pretty blue and you're getting some sort of purpley areas here. So yeah, just not quite handling the colors as well as the Pro 2. And the outside actually looks pretty good here. And yeah, generally not too bad in there. And if we zoom in here, I mean, you can't really make that, make that signature out as you did on the Pro 2. So in all, I think you've got to say the Pro 2 wins hands down. So I think it's pretty clear to see who the winner is from these examples. Like the Pro 2 definitely gives you better detail, better colors and handles the dynamic range a lot better. But I'm not saying don't use the X5 with Massport because it still gives a decent result. Because even looking at this on the screen now, like when it's viewed on a smaller screen, the detail actually doesn't look too bad. It's only because I had it on that full screen then and we were sort of really sort of pixel peeping that you did notice a major difference. And one thing you've got to keep in mind is if you're using the X5 and Matterport for just solely for real estate shoots, it's probably going to be fine because a lot of people are going to well, view these tours on a mobile device or a tablet. And on those little screens, they're going to look absolutely fine, to be honest. And it's only really because I've sort of put them side by side here that you can really notice that. But the Pro 2 definitely handles the colors better. And that's something that is definitely noticeable, whatever screen you're looking at, because it handles like the dynamic range of what you can see inside and outside a lot better and the colors across the scene a lot better. So if you want to take your virtual tours up a level, you know you're going to be shooting Matterport virtual tours, then you, I think you should invest in a Pro 2 or if you can afford it, a Pro 3 camera, because that's why I got the Pro 2, because I've taken my virtual tours up a level now. I'm now shooting for businesses and commercial spaces. And I knew like the X5 or even the Ricoh Theta Z1 wasn't going to cut it if my clients wanted a Massport virtual tour. So that's why I bought the Pro 2. And like I said at the start of this video, the Pro 2s can be picked up at a really good deal now on eBay. I got mine for £600, so it's about $750. So that isn't much more than an X5. So like I say, if you are looking to take your virtual tours up a level and you shoot with Matterport, then I think you do need to invest in one of the Pro 2 or Pro 3 cameras. But if you do want to make tours using other software like Kula, then yeah, still have a 360 camera like the X5 in your bag too because I do use them both for different levels of clients and I get great use and great results out of both for their different use cases. But I hope that's helped make your choice up which one you want to get or whether you want to get them both like me. But if you want to learn how to make virtual tours with Matterport then you can check out this video here. Thanks for watching.